Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Elias. Welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'll be doing a reading vlog. So I haven't done one of these in quite a while, a reading vlog per se. A lot of you guys have requested in the comments that you know I post more vlogs in this video. I'm excited to show you guys some of the things that um, I've been doing lately. And so the book that I'll be doing a reading vlog for is none other than Book of Night by Holly Black. I've actually heard mixed things about um, this said book. This is Holly Black's first adults urban paranormal fantasy. I'm very interested and excited to see how that all unfolds and entails. It's supposedly about magic regarding shadows and it follows this young girl who's sort of a master of arts thief at collecting shadows and secrets and whatnot. Don't know too much about it but I've actually seen the discourse on Twitter where someone tweeted that they returned this book like halfway, they DNF'd it because they didn't like it, and then a lot of other people were replying that, oh you shouldn't do that, that's piracy. And a lot of people were actually disagreeing with her, disagreeing her take on the stance that she shouldn't return a book that she had already bought or a book that she had like partially read. And I sort of disagree with the latter statement and I believe you can return whatever you want. I mean it's your money to spend on, right? So I guess there's also like a bunch of you know, different nuances when it comes to certain books you're returning and whatnot. But I'm not really here to talk about that on the discourse. I'm here to talk about the book itself. I believe this is equivalent or less than 300 pages or so. But before we get further into the vlog, I would kind of like to thank today's video's sponsor. Thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Scentbird is essentially a fragrance subscription service where you get to choose a new designer fragrance to try out every month for just $16. With each fragrance, you get a 30-day supply, meaning you get to try out the fragrance before committing to a full bottle. You can also upgrade to receive two to three products a month, and you can also skip any month without any penalties. It's pretty flexible. Really cool thing about Scentbird is that if you're unsure of where to start or which fragrance is for you, you can head over to the Scentbird website where you can take their quiz, and based on your answers and your preferences, they'll match you with the fragrance that is most compatible for you. There are over 600 designer brands to choose from, and not only do they carry top brands like Gucci, Versace, they also carry indie brands as well. Each fragrance comes in a tube like so and all you got to do is twist it and pull it out. They are eight times bigger than regular perfume samples and their size is pretty handy as well especially for traveling and whatnot. So I'm actually pretty peculiar about the cologne that I choose to wear but thanks to Scentbird I'm able to try out different products to see which one really fits me because this one so far for me has been the clear winner and I'm definitely wearing this on a night out. So Scentbird was kind enough to allow me to choose from their huge selection of fragrances and I chose four of these. So the first fragrance that I chose is from Confessions of a Rebel. This has notes of bergamot, red grapefruit, and pink pepper. The next one that I chose is from Tommy Bahama's Maritime. And this one has notes of bergamot, pink pepper, and cedarwood. Next, I had to choose a fragrance from Versace, of course, and this one is Dylan Blue. This one is really interesting because it has notes of bergamot, grapefruit, incense, and violet leaf. Last but not least is my personal favorite of the bunch, and this is Bulgari Aqua. This one is really cool because it has notes of mandarin, orange, cedar, lavender, and seaweed. So, there you go. Oh, the best. They even come with their own cards with information behind it as well, like all the different notes, the ingredients and stuff. It's really interesting and really informative as well. So if you guys are interested in trying out these fragrances for yourself, you guys can click on the link down below to get 55% off with my code elias 55 ascentbird That essentially in of itself is around $7 for your first month. And with that being said, thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video, and now back to your regular broadcast. Just a quick update for you guys. I am now 70 pages in into the Book of Night. So far, I kind of don't know how to feel about it. Like, I kind of don't know how to feel about this book. Um, not that there are any feelings to begin with. And so far, I don't know, I'm not really getting any of the stuff that I thought I would get or that I was promised in the blurb, right? I think I will just plow through, keep on reading, and update you guys sort of at the end on how I feel and everything because uh, so far I'm not really feeling it. I think I am just like a smidge early 
um, probably before shit hits the fan. Right now it's just building up relationships. We're like diving into the main character's past, giving her some of the backstory. What I do like about this book so far is that there is already an established relationship. Usually one would think that you would meet the love interest in this book and build that foundation, their relationship, something that you could root for. So I thought that was really interesting, sort of refreshing to read about, and I really liked it. So far, the main love interest, he is very intriguing to me as a character, and I want to read more about him. Other than that, um, I'm still a little confused on like the whole glow mist and shadow and the world building in of itself, even though it takes place in the real world. There's some really shady stuff going on, but I still don't fully grasp it. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me as a reader, but there we go. So far, I just want to point out that out of um, all of the Holly Black's books that I've read, I think so far this is my least favorite of all of her books in terms of writing style. For some reason, that style that she has for like The Cool Prince or The Darkest Part of the Forest, the books that I read from her, like The Spiderweb Chronicles too, the vibes don't match. Like this is like totally different. This feels like a debut book to me for some reason. Maybe it's the fact that it's sort of her first book in the adult genre. This to me has less of like an urban fantasy feel and it's more of the vibes that I get when you're reading Ninth House. Even though Ninth House is technically urban fantasy, when I think of urban fantasy I think of like werewolves, vampires, you know, shapeshifters, supernatural stuff, and magic. This has like a smidge of all that. There isn't any like supernatural creatures yet or so far that I know of. All we're dealing with is just like the manipulation of shadows. Very little magic, just like a smidge, a hint. But yeah, that is my preliminary review on this book so far, 70 pages in. Hello, he's finally here. <laughs> oh, you had an imaginary friend, didn't you? Yeah, I did. You liked it, right? Yeah, I thought it was really underrated. This is what happens when a white man comes into my house. <laughs> Teaching Jesse how to roll, his first roll. We'll have a good roll. Okay, so you're gonna take the, the edge of it. Okay. And do this. Roll it. Tuck everything in the middle. Okay, here goes the best. Tuck everything in the middle. It's just like a taco. Just in the middle like a taco. What about like? Yeah, tuck everything in the middle. There you go. Then you're gonna grab some shrimp. It's so sticky. Just roll it. Tuck everything in the middle. There you go. Tuck everything in the middle. Nice. There you go. Then you're gonna take some shrimp. I'm just gonna push it. Put it down. Oh, you did. Yeah. Down where it's gonna like three. Keep rolling it on top of it. And then when you get to sort of the ending bits, you're gonna sort of turn over the flaps. Okay, that can be your piece. Okay. Just one. Okay, that was yeah. And then you touch it over. That's it. Wow. Ta-da! <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> then take a spoon and then like drizzle the sauce on top. Yeah. And take a big fucking bite, bitch. <laughs> See how it is. Mmm. How's the sauce? Poison sauce, peanut butter, garlic, water, sugar. Tasty. No. Uh, rude. Wait, you wanna know fun facts? Where is what? it? Where's the where is this? Science fiction? I found a channel for this book. <laughs> I found yes, the channel like, through Red Rising. Red Rising. That Red was my first So it's not like, like you need to read these but I'm telling you. I know everybody every like everybody is like Robin Hob, Robin Hob, Robin Hob, mm -hmm. and I'm just like <sighs> Okay, but you know what book was good? XOXO.
Uh, it was pretty good. All right, Jesse. Look how tiny his hands are. They're not Put that small. <laughs> Look, they're so much sticky. <laughs> Put them. Spread them. <laughs> Spread it for me, babe. Oh my god. Look how tiny that is. It's all right. I'll take care of you. Oh my. <laughs>talk about Book of Night by Holly Black. I finally finished and I think I'm gonna give this book an overall three out of five stars, okay? Where to begin with this one? To be honest, this book felt more like a low-key thriller detective murder mystery than an urban fantasy book in my opinion. There's very little going on in terms of like fantasy, magic, or even fighting for that matter. The main character, Charlie, she basically goes off in like one location and to another location, basically trying to find clues, you know, her sleuthing skills and all that. And that's the majority of this book. The most interesting character in this entire book wasn't even Charlie herself, it was her boyfriend actually. His backstory, his character arc was way more interesting than the actual main character herself. Charlie herself, I couldn't even begin to tell you what this girl even likes. To me, she felt more of a two dimensional, sort of like the definition of like a grungy, edgy girl with a tragic backstory. That's basically it. I couldn't even tell you what her interests are, what she hates, what she dislikes. The entirety of the book, her main motive is to essentially support herself and her sister, who, by the way, I didn't even care for, like, at all. I was pretty much unsympathetic to Charlie and her sister and the situation that they're in, just because Charlie's sister, Posey, she was such an unlikable character in every way. Like, I get it, when you have, like, these morally gray characters, they have some sort of, like, layers and aspects to them, right? The nuance something that you could root for and relate to. She was either complaining or whining. To me, she was like super selfish because all she wanted in life was to sort of like manipulate shadows as well. So she would put herself through like these strenuous things and like these stressful situations in order to provoke that traumatic experience in unlocking the shadow ability. As far as shadows go, I still don't even fully grasp the concept of like the magic system in this book. Pretty sure within a week or two, I'll probably forget what this book was about or how it even comes together because I still cannot get a full grasp on 
how everything works because there are like four distinct ways to manipulate or control your shadow or whatever and uh, I don't even remember or know all of them. I just know that there is a way that you can manipulate shadows to do your bidding, another to heighten or elevate your emotions and that's pretty much all I can remember at this point. Oh, and speaking of nuance, as I mentioned previously, the villains in this book didn't even care for them at all because, you know, most of their motives are very villainous. Overall, to me, it felt somewhat shallow and very forced. So, was the book inherently bad? No, not at all. But was it good as it could have been? No. I feel like if the characters were sort of aged down and some of the most explicit stuff in the book were taken away, this would feel like a YA book in general. Like you can barely differentiate whether this is like YA or adults even. The majority of this book was heavily influenced and derived from flashbacks. If most of the flashbacks were taken out, then this book would literally be less than 200 pages. 200 pages of what you may ask? Essentially just our main character witnessing a murder, stealing stuff, and then going to a different location, finding clues, going off on her own to do some sleuthing, and at the end of the day, just trying to survive the final meeting, location, um, to drop off the goods for the bad guy and survive that encounter. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I do want to say that the last 50 pages though were actually pretty good, pretty decent. There was a twist in here that I didn't see coming. Thank God for that because that sort of elevated um, my overall expectations for this book. It was actually pretty entertaining. I really liked how everything was sort of wrapped up, concluded, even though this book was very slow paced and you sort of had to get through like more than halfway through the book to figure out what the whole plot was. The whole overall journey to get to where we are at at the end of the book, it wasn't really worth it in my opinion. I feel like if this was a novella, maybe it could have stood out better. Also, the ending of this whole book. I thought this book was a standalone. The ending sort of says otherwise. Don't get me wrong, you can sort of read this as a standalone, but the ending definitely does leave you wanting way more. I feel like this was done on purpose, very deliberately. Could it have been avoided? Could it have just closed that chapter there and done? Absolutely, 100% yes. Holly was probably thinking in the last page, no, you know what, I'm gonna get my coin, I'm gonna write a spinoff or a sequel to this book, and who knows, it could be marginally better than what we got because I think overall, if it was any other book than Holly Black, I feel like my expectations wouldn't have been so high because, you know, I've read and enjoyed her other books. And this was like her first, like, debut into the adult genre or category. Overall, you know, it's, it's fine. It's not as good as I was expecting it to be. And just it went in a different direction than I thought. I do think this is a decent adult book with a hint of, like, dark fantasy. But honestly, you can go read better urban fantasy books out there in the same genre. But from Holly Black, a tad bit disappointing. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much all I have to say for this book going in. Uh, I do know that a lot of people were very disappointed by this book or didn't really understand the direction this book went in. There was this tweet, as I said in the beginning of the video, where someone said that they returned this book because they didn't really enjoy it, so they DNF'd it and returned it. And there was this, like, this whole discourse, two different sides, where people were like, you shouldn't have done that. You can't return books that you've already bought or read, even though it's like halfway through. And the other side was like, you can definitely return it, especially if you DNF'd it and especially since it's coming from a white author, namely Holly Black. So I'd be curious to know what your thoughts about this whole discourse and this book in general. Please let me know if you have read it. I would love to know what you thought about it. If there was a sequel or spin on to this book, I'm not sure if I would actually pick it up. I think I would have to hear from like reviews from just people that I know and follow um, who have read this book. All right, with that being said, thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you all soon with a new video. Thank you to Senfred for sponsoring literally the most selfish thing about like li who by the way who by the way no who by the way who by the way here. didn't even help help who by the way like didn't even in unlocking um in the unlocking shadow, the, unlocking the shadow in ability unlocking or the, shadow in, in unlocking the in unlock shadow. I feel like I feel like I've read I feel like I've read I feel like I've read better villains the villains in this book they their mode is like the villain, like the villains, like the, like you could barely, like you could, like you could barely differentiate, like you could sort of, like, <clears throat> like you can, down below, please let me know if you have, please let me know.